Here's a question. Would you let someone implant a microchip into your hand if you would receive $2,000 a month? A month in return for getting a chip put in your hand. You heard me right. We'll give you universal basic income, basically. 2,000 euros, $2,000 a month, if you allow us to put a microchip in your hand. That's exactly what's about to happen as part of the rollout of the central bank digital currencies. That's a carrot for them to rope you into this mess. We'll get to that part of the story in a minute. The chip implantation process. Not the corn chip, as Dan said in our chat, but a actual metallic tracking chip. Um, but a new report just published this week by the Bank for International Settlements explains how our new digital money system is about to work. We've been warning you that this, this was coming for a long time uh, on this show. Also, we weren't the only ones predicting this. Uh, it was predicted in a little book, you might have heard of it, called uh, The Bible, uh, The Mark of the Beast. Uh, for one thing, this new system, this is how this new system would operate. According to them, the Bank for International Settlements, the new reserve currency, forget the dollar as you know it, basically. This will be the new reserve currency, which is what, how they want to label it and how they are labeling it. This would be used to settle all transactions. As everyone moves away from the U.S. dollar right now, this seems like perfect timing to be moving to this new system. So are they purposefully torpedoing the U.S. dollar in preparation for a global a global new uh, reserve currency. One might wonder, right? We don't believe in conspiracy theories around here, uh, but you have to wonder. It could include the confiscation of all property, physical property. By assigning it, every uh, every item would see, receive a real world, every real world item would receive its own unique digital token. So what do you guys think about this, right? This idea that they could, I'm not saying they're going to, but you know, your car, your house, all of these sort of physical items that need a token process, you have to get them, you have to get them digitally tokenized in order for you to claim ownership of these items. No more selling cars without a digital token, right? No black market of selling cars. They all have to be tokenized. They all have to have a digital tracking ID to know exactly who owns them through this, what they call this transparent process. So it's like a blockchain for the world. Right. I mean, it would be on the blockchain, right? Everything would be, the, everyone would be given a tokenized digital ID. And I'll, I'll explain more about exactly the tokenization process in a moment. But basically, the idea that if you don't comply with this, then we're going to take your property and, and tokenize it ourselves is the, is the idea. Um, and they won't come out and say this, but that's exactly what some people are, are worried about, is that they would take your items, they would take your physical property and do it for you or confiscate it altogether if you're not willing to comply. And think of it like a like contraband. It would be considered contraband. Imagine trying to go through the airport or airport security with that laptop that you didn't have tokenized, so there's no digital footprint of it. Oh, what is that? What is that item that you're carrying there? Why do you have that there? Oh, I'm um, sorry, I didn't have it registered with the government. I don't have a digital ID for that item? No worry, we'll take it off your hands. So your digital wallet, your car, your house, your laptop, your phone, all of it assigned a digital token. Inside those tokens would be a set of rules for how each item can and cannot be used so that each person can be controlled and conditioned directly by the central bank. You've used your digital wallet to buy your allotment of beef or chicken this month. You're cut off. You're cut off. Your wallet is not limited. Uh, your, your wallet is now limited until next month. And by the way, you think this is like a conspiracy theory. The Federal Reserve, literally on their website, loves and talks about the benefits of expiring currency, the expiration of currency. And, and hey, China's already doing it, in part. So there's already limitations and expiration of currency. We already have this. And the Fed is openly talking about this on their website. Think this is a, a dream? Okay, just wait until it happens. Let's let's actually let them describe. So here is after this Bank of International Settlements rolled this out last week. Here is their tokenization process in their own words. Just watch sort of the well, let me know if you think that this is creepy in any way. Watch. Tokenization is more than just a digital representation of money and assets. It involves digital representation on a programmable platform, which means that tokens can incorporate the rules and logic governing transfers, 
as well as the information about the asset itself. Now, currently, money and other claims reside in separate databases that are connected through third-party messaging systems, meaning that transactions need to be reconciled separately before being settled with finality. Tokenization makes all this one seamless operation. Tokenization is well suited to resolve incentive and information problems. Think of an example where a buyer would like to pay when the goods are delivered, while the seller would like to deliver the goods when the buyer pays. Tokenization can solve this problem by executing both transactions at the same time. So two real world applications. So they um, they they talk about this. They talk about this tokenization as solving these problems. Right it involves. And it involves the represent representing the ownership rights of real world assets as digital tokens on a blockchain. In other words, you own a car and that's confirmed because there's a digital token saying you do. And it's confirmed on the blockchain. You wouldn't need to go do title searches and all of your antiquated things like that when selling your car. It's already on the blockchain and confirmed that you own it. It's a digital certificate of authenticity. They'll sell it to us as a way to speed up the banking process as he was just doing, as Hoi Shin was just doing. Right now, there are 10 steps in order to wire money to someone. It's long, especially if you're not using your bank. Like if you're you know, doing a wire from like Bank of America to PNC Bank, there are multiple steps. Each bank needs to verify that you are, in fact, sending the money. They need to basically send a request. So now tokenization and CBDCs would wire money that can ha can do this in one step, one verification process instead of 10 steps. So it sounds great. That's how they will sell it to us. It's easy. It's faster. But what if government controls the blockchain? And what if the main currency is a central bank digital currency run by the Fed? And you want to use Bitcoin? You want to use Dogecoin? You want to use cash? Sorry, sorry. That's outlawed now. You can't do that. Oh, you're using this illegal currency sorry you're going to jail we're already you know we already see the move towards trying to get rid of digital currency that's not run by the federal government they don't like they don't like uh bitcoin they absolutely don't like a lot of these other um cryptocurrencies sorry that's outlawed you need to use america's digital currency or the eu's digital currency that is controlled by central power you don't need to imagine it because it's already happening but more importantly, it's all about the control. Buried towards the end of this report is this nugget on who would control these transactions. And again, this is why no one's covering this story because it's nuanced and it takes time to explain this all. So you're just going to wind up one day with this thing in your wallet, a digital wallet, and no one's going to explain this to you. In this report, buried deep in the I mean like 40 pages deep, I stumbled across this, the governance section of a unified ledger could follow existing arrangements whereby central banks and regulated private partners participants take part in governance under established rules. For example, when money and payments are involved in a ledger, the central bank will necessarily play a role as the provider of the ultimate settlement asset. Its specific involvement in governance arrangements could take various forms, much as it does in the case of traditional payment systems, where public ownership, regulation and oversight, as well as private mutual ownership are viable options. So in other words, the Fed will play a necessary role as the provider and the ultimate settlement decider in these transactions. So the central bank, of course, will control these transactions. And it means that it represents trillions of dollars in potential transactions of these governments. They stand to make a lot of money. And according to the report released just recently by the Global Financial Markets Association, this is the Boston Consulting Group and others estimate as part of this report. Look here on your screen. The value of tokenized illiquid assets will increase from roughly 0.3 trillion in 2022 to 16 trillion dollars in transactions by 2030. That in seven more years, we will jump up by almost 15 and a half trillion dollars in additional settlements. Richard Werner is an economist who is a World Economic Forum insider. Think of him as a whistleblower against these globalists. He was chosen by Klaus Schwab at the time as a global leader. Here he explains how the CBDC or central bank digital currency will start off on our phones as an app, but then move to something far more nefarious, an implant in your hand. Yes, a chip in your hand. Listen. 
Mm. And what, what people don't mention is what do these CBDCs actually look like? You know, um, at the moment, there's a bit of talk about this being phone-based apps. And yes, that is the initial phase. But what was already ready around 2015 is the ultimate goal, what they really want. Apparently, I was told by a central banker is, you know, CBDC looks like a small grain of rice that they want to put under your skin, which is, in my view, a violation of human dignity. And they realize there is a hurdle. So to get people to, get people to accept this, there will be, you know, why, why suddenly all the billionaires saying, let's have universal basic income? Because the story is going to be, oh, now we've created, you've created this vast unemployment and, and uh, disruption and crises. Well, we need universal basic income. You will get uh, 2,000 euros into your account every month. But of course, to run this efficiently, we need to use the latest technology. So, you know, you, you need the <laughs> CBDC uh, yeah. chip implant. Okay. So you get this universal basic income. Right. That's the carrot. You can't actually then make any more than that. That will be like you have to have what everybody has. Then. Well, I mean, I don't know if you get, you make more money than that, or you probably have to qualify at a certain threshold. But you know, would you be willing to go along with this? Is the question, and it's going to work. I guess There's that's be my so many extrapolation. People. Is like the scary part is this becomes the Hunger Games. You just get your portion, right? And then you have no rights well, I, to anything any above that. And I think when, like we talked about it before, it's like it's going to target the poorest people because they're the ones going to be wanting to get on board with this because it's going to make life easier for them. It's like you get this stipend plus your income, and this is going to make it easier for you. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, that's the thing. I think this is going to work. Mm -hmm. This is how they will get people. Mm -hmm. We will put you on a universal basic income and you will be given a certain set of parameters how you can use this income. And you're, by the way, you're going to have to get a chip in your hand for tracking. That's how you will access it, right? And additionally, you will then, uh, you will be capped at certain purchases. Your carbon footprint will be tracked. What are you buying? Where are you going? And the idea, of course, that, oh, this is only for purchases. We won't be able to track your physical location, your whereabouts. Really? Communication, how is it being tracked? Is it Bluetooth, near field community? I just walk up and tap it against any kind of like a, uh, you know, a soda machine. We've already seen them rolling it out at different uh, grocery stores. We see people in Sweden are, are jumping on board with this, wanting to use this on a regular basis. So there's people already electing to use this, wanting to use this. Um, and they'll do this with the promise of basic income. $2,000 a month. Would you do it? Let us know in the chat if you would do that. This is not some fever dream, by the way. Where was this? Where did this come from? This was explained in great detail by Klaus Schwab himself in 2016. Listen. Aujourd'hui, au bout de ça, on parle de puce qu'on pourra s'implanter. Ce sera quand ça? Certainement dans les dix années à venir. Et d'abord, on va les implanter dans nos vêtements, uh -huh. c'est-à-dire wearables, comme on le dit. Et après, on pourrait s'imaginer qu'on les implante dans nos cerveaux ou dans nos topos. Et à la fin, peut-être il y a une communication directe entre notre cerveau et euh, la, le monde digital. Ce que nous voyons, c'est une sorte de fusion du monde physique, digital et biologique. Yeah. Hmm. Digital and biological. What do you guys think? Am I the only one outraged by this? Um, they want to inject this and be able to control our monetary policy. Um, I know this is a little hard for some people to swallow, but they are doing it, guys. I mean, this is what's coming out with this reserve currency. This will be... And I have to ask the question. I'll ask it again. Do you think they intentionally torpedoed the... are torpedoing the U.S. dollar in favor of this currency? It makes it unattractive. And they want us to move away from cash to begin with. That's been the plan all along. But, I mean, the writing is on the wall here, guys. I don't know. This is the kind of thing that I want to sort of put aside and be like, no, until I cannot any until, longer. Until they're knocking at your door. We're here for your chip installation. Right. Natalie, where's your hand? I guess I'm more prone to consider something like this after the pandemic uh, as, you know. As a reality. As a reality. Yeah, as I mean, a reality. It sounds so fantastical that like you would you would just like brush it off as being like that's that's just too crazy. But then again, like 
I, yeah, <laughs> like, right. I don't think it is. I don't think it is. Yeah. Given what we've been through now, it seems so a, a little too transparent. And um, who was it that it was a singer who does these projects that sort of prepare us for futuristic uh, endeavors that does movie. You talked about this a long time ago. It was a lead singer from some band who does these fictional projects to prepare us for a science fiction reality um, movie uh, uh, projects. Oh, are Remember? you talking about, are you, are you talking about, um, uh, DeLong from Blink-18, formerly that, Blink-182? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so that sort of puts the idea in my head that like, maybe we have been warned about this through fiction, uh, for a long time. And I can, you can think of so many cautionary tales, Gattaca, um, yeah, Hunger Games, all of these. The uh, drip, like sort of the drip feeding of it. I mean, but you don't even need like fiction now in modern days, all you need to do is look at the Bible. You know, and looking at this prediction of the mark of the beast and this idea of, of being able to, to track. Um, so I don't know. I mean, and this is. I, I don't know if that's a literal interpretation of mark of the beast, though. I mean, the mark of the beast is a sign of evil, like a sign of, you know. I, I'm not sure it, if, it, if it was. Uh, I, maybe I'm, my, my interpretation is, is a, a bit more literal than that or figurative. Hmm. Is that what, what do you mean by that? Well, I mean, everyone in the chat is saying that and that's, you know, there are people saying the Bible. Yes. The mark of the beast, the Bible. So is it, you know, I, I don't know. We had uh, some Bible scholars. Here. I thought you I'm had to scholar. sort of, you, you wouldn't just accidentally get like, or it wasn't for like just the poorest, you know, the, the mark of the beast was like something deliberate, more deliberate than that, but more deliberate than what someone injecting you with a, a, a piece of right you don't just prey on people and then eat them up like the mark of the beast right well, you would get it more deliberately than that so it doesn't just show up on people unless i i don't know and I'm, I'm just not sure how well, that you know what plays else is out. scary it, yeah what's scary? talk about what you're talking about right now and then add in the millions of uh genetically modified mosquitoes that they're releasing into florida texas you know we talk about being injected with things it's like they, they don't leave much open for, it's like, it seems conspiratorial, but like this stuff is happening lockstep with each other. And it's like, they're ha like, these people meet and they come up with these, like, these are uh, brains that come together and think of how can we manipulate things? They, they know stats, they know data, and they, and they are planning something specific and they know exactly what they're doing. And they know how to do it through propaganda and, and like the things that getting people on board with these things by making it a convenience. So, you know, I fear that a majority of people are going to fall for this just based on the convenience alone. Yeah. OK, well, I should couch the fact that I was raised a Jehovah's Witness and I have read the book of Revelation many times. Uh, that faith takes it very literally. And w the way that that is taught is that the mark of the beast is for the non believers, the sort of non faith acceptors. And so you would have to opt into it as a bad person. It wouldn't just show up on all of us. Um, if we were righteous, that does not seem to be the interpretation that people who were saying this in the chat subscribe to. Um, so I would have to re-examine that. I didn't, I didn't think that it was something that could just be for all of us. Yeah. I'm not uh, a, um, I'm not a biblical scholar, okay. so I'm not, uh, I'm not, you know, Okay, we, we unintentionally stepped in something we didn't mean to. We. Uh, we? You said Mark of the Beast. I'm just saying that this is this has been repeated over and over again, that this is, and that I'm repeating what the chat is saying here, that this is the Mark of the Beast, and that this is a admission or moving away from, f f I don't know, uh, from Jesus Christ, I guess, and wanting to say, well, we'll, we'll just go along with the system. We will just become part of the system and be controlled by the system. Okay, that much I can, I can, if that's, I'm with you on that. Right. right. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay, fine. Uh, I need to think on that for a little bit. Okay. I, I, I want to think about that parallel for a while before I speak about it. Uh, okay. Okay. Someone says we're right. Yes. Okay. We're right. That's it's, it's about accepting the system and sort of stepping in and allowing them to just take over. And they, apparently they did say it would be in the forehead or the hand um, again, but uh, nevertheless, this is the system that we're about to have. Okay, this is rolling out, and this is coming to a uh, this is coming to a monetary system near you. And I think part of the problem is, you know, because you kind of hit on it, you're like, oh, this is something I hope to maybe sweep under the rug, and maybe I won't face it until it's here. It's like, mm -hmm. well, we no, no, we can't allow it to just be here, and then it's too late. Like we need to be vocal about it. 
when these governments are moving towards this, we need to tell our elected leaders, we don't want this. We don't want the control of everything that we do and the tracking of everything that we do. By the time it's here, it's too late. If it's already rolled out and everyone is reliant on this new system, you, I mean, then it's too late, I think. I really think it's too late. And you have this sort of universal basic income being rolled out to everyone um, and they're relying on it. And then it's very hard to walk that back. Yes, I understand what you're saying. You know, it's very hard to like rewind the tape then and be like, oh, well, I guess we didn't have a chance to talk about it like we did. Yes, but we saw during the pandemic that most government handouts are something that bite you back. So we already know this, right? right? This right. is not new information. But I mean, it's so. like, you know, we can share this segment. You can share it on social media, push it out there, get the word out about this. This is actually happening and it's coming. So we we can we can all say we're not ignorant about it. Um, and we, you know, we can take action about it. I think I, it really is troubling to me, especially what the EU is already doing with like limiting the amount of cash you can use and give out to people like beyond $300, you're considered basically in the gray area of criminality. If you're using to pay for things with more than a certain hundreds of euros for mm -hmm. things, this is anyway, this is what's coming. Thank you so much for watching this segment here at Redacted. We are live every day at 4 p.m. Eastern time trying to share the stories that the mainstream media will not cover. You should also come over and join our community of Redacted Rebels over at redacted.inc. That's our private locals community where we can share exclusive content that we simply cannot share here on YouTube. Come over and join the rebellion together right now by going to redacted.inc. We'll see you next time.